Do you like learning? Are you a lifelong learner? Well, you've come to the right place, because by the end of this video, you'll be very well learned and well on your way to making the Fortune 500. In all seriousness, something I love about Risk of Rain 2 is the infinite potential for learning. I have over 2,000 hours in the game, not that that's something I should be proud of, but I'm still learning every day. But one of the reasons I keep coming back are because of these advanced techniques like breaking the light barrier with speed shooting or insta-killing flying enemies. If either of those looked interesting, stick around. Everything I'm going to talk about in this video is unknown to a vast majority of the player base, and I can guarantee you'll learn something new in this video. If and when you do, feel free to drop a comment telling me what it was. I'm going to go through these by character, and I'm just going to be talking about either hidden mechanics, bug slash exploits, or just general gameplay tips that I feel like are unknown. I'm going to refer to these with the blanket term tech, but this is really more of a survivor tips and tricks video. If you want something particular, I'll leave timestamps in the description. I'll also be updating the description if an update slash patch changes any of these. I also plan on doing videos on each of the survivors separately so I can go more in depth after the DLC drops. So subscribe to keep an eye out for that. It's so lucky. You'll do anything to get one. We're going to start off with Mercenary, since he has my favorite techs. Most of his stuff is really easy to learn and very satisfying to pull off. We have four to go over. My personal favorite Merc tech is his third hit Expose Transfer. The third swing of Merc's primary applies the Expose debuff, but you can actually apply the Expose debuff with any of Merc's abilities by using them right after the second swing. The timing can be tricky at first, but once you get used to this, this tech will completely change the way you play Merc. This tech, I think, single-handedly made Mercenary my favorite survivor. I especially like doing this with Merc's alt utility, Focused Assault, which is not nearly as bad as you may have been led to believe. Since Focused Assault already applies the Exposed debuff after a one second delay, you can double proc Exposed with one dash. I think something with the Exposed debuff reduces all your cooldowns by one second, and since his dash can hit multiple enemies, you can essentially have perma uptime on his dash if you're dealing with large groups of enemies. It also helps to combo this with Slicing Wind so you can throw out even more exposed procs and DPS without locking yourself in a 5 second animation like you otherwise would with Eviscerate. I know this might sound complicated, but it's really not. Here's a clip of me poning some noobs with this. It's important to note that this tech gets significantly harder the more attack speed you have, and at a certain point I think it just becomes impossible. Anything more than one soldier syringe is usually too much for me, so syringes, war banners, predatory instincts, war horns, and berserker pauldrons should be avoided at all costs. You can insta-kill big flying enemies by booty bumping them with either of Merc's dashes. It's not really known how this works exactly, but movement speed helps tremendously. Movement speed is key with this tech, the more you have, the better. You'll also want to aim for the center of mass on the target. The most useful application for this is insta-killing the Alloy Worship Unit on Siren's Call for a free red. Luckily, Solus Control Units and the Alloy Worship Unit are the easiest to do this on because they're huge targets and hitting them in the center will generally do it. Vagrants are pretty hard just because they're shaped so weirdly, but this works on them as well. This actually works on all flying monsters, excluding those damn dirty worms, but smaller monsters are really difficult to do this on. It takes a bit of practice, but mastering this tech is well worth it. And this isn't the only time we'll cheese the Alloy Worship unit either, so stay tuned. But you can cancel the animation for Blinding Assault by using your secondary in the middle of it. This helps if you're in a situation where you want to deal damage to an enemy, but you don't want to lose your current position by dashing away. If you use Merc's default secondary on a slope, you can transfer his momentum upwards. This has multiple uses. It first and foremost makes it easier to traverse maps, especially maps that have an emphasis on verticality. It's also an easy way to skip pillars on moon. The lower gravity really amplifies the effect here. Also, using this tech with head stompers allows you to very easily nuke the whole map. And if you think head stompers are bad, I implore you to try this. It's honestly the most overpowered item in the game, you just have to know how to use it. If you have stompers and a wax quail, you can actually do this on all survivors. You just have to jump on a slope with enough speed. The official term for this tech is trimping, which Urban Dictionary defines as trimping. In the bizarre world of hip-hop shrimp dancing, artists who practice trimping create dance movements to replicate the natural motion of the majestic shrimp. The earliest known pioneer of trimping is Michael Boogaloo Shrimp Chambers. Let me see you trimp. Wriggles around in a fetal position. I'm trimping, I'm trimping, I'm trimping! You know damn well trimping ain't easy. Written by the wise sage da -da 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 DJ Trimp in the mix. You already know this guy fucks. I bet he has shrimp children on every continent. Yeah, shrimp are pretty cool. 
Make sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> Let's move on. Wow, look at that. Um, uh, you've got that iconic shrimp glow that everyone's talking about. Moving on to what I consider one of the hardest but most worthwhile techs in the game, and this is Captain Speed Shooting, and oh man, if you don't have Carpal Tunnel now, you will very soon. You can use beacons to reset the cooldown on Captain's primary. This is a very fast tech, and we'll go through it input by input. So, first of all, you'll want to make sure you're holding W. Then, fire your primary. Immediately after firing, you'll want to press R to pull up the beacon menu, and then left click as if you're going to place a beacon. Make sure you don't actually place it though, because that will ruin the tech, so you need to look up or in a spot that won't place it. The reason we're doing this is because pressing M1, even if you can't place a beacon, will cancel out of the menu. As soon as you cancel out of the menu, sprint to get rid of the menu closing delay and shoot again. This all needs to be done within a fraction of a second, and here's what it looks like with perfect execution. Now, it's important that you keep your first beacon, the one on the left. This tech does not work if you've used your primary beacon. It's also very important to aim in a place where you cannot place your beacon. It's very easy to accidentally place the beacon while doing this. You can get rid of the right beacon, that one's fine, just make sure the left one is always there. Now this next captain tip isn't really hidden, just massively underutilized in my opinion. Of the four beacons, a shock is hands down the best. Hacking gets most of the hype, but given the choice between opening two chests for free on each stage and stunlocking the entire map, I'd easily take the latter. Putting shock beacons at choke points or even inside the teleporter circle can take so much pressure off. Only so many enemies can spawn at a time, and having a majority of the monsters in stun prison means you don't have to worry about the majority of monsters. It's possible to freeze the entire map with just one shock beacon. A common argument I see against this is it takes time to do that. The thing is though, it often takes more time to kill an enemy than to just stun it. Shock beacons alone are powerful enough, but if you couple this with Diablo Strike, oh my god. Diablo is amazing. Diablo's drawback is it takes 20 seconds to fire, so aiming it is kinda hard. But if everything's locked in stun prison, they can't do anything but watch as Doom approaches. If you haven't tried out shock beacons with Diablo, do it. It's some of the most fun I've had with this game in a long time. And speaking of Diablo, if you stand in the center of the strike, when it hits, it sends you really far up. The only time this would ever be useful is for skipping pillars on moon. If you do this on any other map, you hit the skybox and take extra damage from the momentum. So suffice it to say, you can very easily kill yourself doing this, but it makes you feel like a badass when you can successfully pull this off. Our last tech is Diablo Strike Mithrix Cheese. By timing your Diablo Strike so it hits the second the Mithrix fight starts, you can skip both phase one and three of the fight. You can also activate Diablo, not place it for 40 seconds while you wait for the cooldown and then have two strikes up simultaneously. I'm not patient enough for that, but it's an option. Next up is Acrid. Unless you count killing yourself on a fence post as a tech, the only tech Acrid really has is his first hit primary cancel. Instead of holding left click and letting Acrid do his three hit combo, you can attack at super speed by sprinting after his first hit to cancel the animation. If done right, you can put out tons of damage. Be careful not to sprint too early though, otherwise you'll just have a seizure, which may have its uses in real life, but unfortunately there's no advantage to having a seizure in Risk of Rain too. You can also cancel after the third hit so you still get the regeneration from it, but no, Bite also cancels the animation on the third hit, and the cooldown lines up perfectly. So you'd really only want to cancel the third hit if you have a ton of attack speed or are running Neurotoxin as your secondary. This also isn't really a tech, but something you may not know, Acrid's Bite works like a reverse crowbar, meaning the more damaged an enemy is, the more powerful Ravenous Bite will be. Acrid also has some pretty cool movement strats, but I'm going to save that for a separate video. Okay, throw me some numbers. Now, this next one is Engineer, and Engineer has some pretty crazy strats. You can place Inji's stationary turrets inside walls to protect them from the elements. This works almost anywhere, and if you really want to get carried away with this, you can place the turrets outside the walls before the Mithrix fight, and if done properly, he'll fixate on them, but won't actually be able to kill them. This is pretty well known, but you can actually use stationary turrets to hold down pressure plates on abandoned aqueduct. Now, this next one is 100% not intended, and will probably be patched at some point. Replacing Engie's secondary with hooks of heresy while having harpoons equipped opens the door for horrendous shenanigans. 
Opening the harpoons menu resets the cooldown for hooks, so you can basically just spam hooks to your vile and disgusting heart's content. The action is utility secondary secondary or shift m2 m2 if you're on keyboard. Shift opens the menu, m2 closes it, and the second m2 fires the hooks. If you do this one, prepare for your dad's disappointment. This next tech is completely acceptable and won't get you disowned. I call it the wiggle. Wiggling the camera while firing harpoons resets the camera, making it so you don't have to lock onto the same target four separate times. Multi by far has the most techs out of all survivors, so strap in because there's a lot to go over. I would say his most iconic tech is double rebar. To do this you need to have retool equipped with both primaries set to rebar puncher. This will allow us to bypass the rebar puncher cooldown animation by quickly switching to the other one. It used to be as simple as just holding down the left mouse and R, but this was nerfed a bit, so now you need to time your shots to right after this X goes away. However, this is really only something you need to worry about in the early game, as a single soldier syringe will negate the nerf and let you do double rebar the way God intended. Did you know? Miyamoto first envisioned multi as a flying type. This was cut from the initial release after a small homunculus came to Miyamoto in a dream and told him that his son would be disappointed in him if he went through with it. However, multi still has his flying ability hidden in the game. To do this, you need a shit ton of attack speed and double nail gun with power mode. Nail gun has a knockback mechanic, which we can initiate rapidly with enough attack speed. To get momentum going, look in the opposite direction you want to go and boost with both nail guns at the same time. The timing can be tricky but it's optimal to tap fire both at the same time and do it again as soon as the cooldown is ready. This not only lets you fly, but it's also a powerful and very fun movement tech. The movement can be kind of hard because you're moving backwards, so you need really good spatial understanding of the maps to effectively do this. I'm not very good at it, I need about 20 syringes to be able to consistently fly, but I'm sure it can be done with less. Now, 20 syringes sounds like a lot, but that's just on normal maps. The moon has lower gravity, which makes this a lot easier. You can skip pillars with only 7 syringes, but your timing needs to be pretty spot on. I feel a lot more comfortable with 8 or 9 syringes, but if you're struggling with this tech, don't feel bad. A, it takes a lot of practice, and B, this is probably the hardest tech in the game, in my opinion. Next is 100% Accuracy Nail Gun. This is one of the more interesting techs. By using power mode with a saw as the first primary and nail gun as the second, you can actually have perfect accuracy on the nail gun by using both at the same time. This seems more like a bug than anything. I think what's happening here is Power Saw has 100% accuracy, and for some reason that's transferred to his other primary. Multi second primary has some other weird properties too. For example, you can still shoot while frozen, in strides of heresy, or while in a volcanic egg. You can actually use both saw and nail gun while in the egg, which makes it a pretty useful equipment if you're rocking this loadout. I didn't realize how broken this actually was until I started gathering footage for this video. If multi second primary is nail gun and you keep firing it throughout the duration of egg or heresy, nail gun gets into this weird glitch state where you're not using power mode, but you're still firing the second nail gun. The second nail gun is inactive, but the animation is still playing as if it was firing. If you get hooks of heresy, you can keep firing both at the same time, and multi will be in the state until you either let go of M2 or you sprint. Now, I spent a lot of time abusing multi's primaries, but his secondary can be just as busted. Activating power mode replaces your secondary with another primary, but this has the unintended consequence of completely refueling your stock of secondaries. It doesn't matter how many you have. Let's say you have 19 backup mags for a total of 20 canisters. With a 6 second cooldown on each, it would take 2 minutes to refill all of his canisters but the act of simply entering and exiting power mode refills all 20 instantly. This can be combined with another tech. Normally the game doesn't let you spam canisters because of a quick cooldown animation after one is thrown. This can be bypassed by sprinting right after you throw a canister. So basically just spamming sprint and holding M2. These two techs can be combined to make a pseudo area of effect stun build. Unfortunately, its usefulness is kind of limited. A, it requires a lot of backup mags, and B, a lot of the time you'd be better off using other parts of your kit. I would not be surprised if this one in particular gets patched in the near future, so enjoy it while you can. I'm speaking from a place of privilege, I know this. If I don't speak against ableism, I'd be remiss. Not everyone can move their body like I can, but you can still have holes just for a million a planet. Huntress only has two texts that I'm aware of. The first one is Rapid Fire with Ballista. The conventional way of using Ballista is pressing R or whatever it's binded to and clicking the mouse three times. 
However, the drawback of this is you spend a lot of time stalling in the air. Even with a fast trigger finger, this leaves you vulnerable to all kinds of attacks. So to get around this, spam not only left click, but R as well. Ballista can actually be fired with the same button used to activate it. So if done correctly, you'll insta-fire all three shots. You can also time Ballista to shoot Mithrix right as he spawns by aiming at him right before the fight starts. You can also use blink slash triple blink to yeet pots on abandoned aqueduct. You need to be careful though, because you can really send grandma flying. This makes getting bands a breeze with Huntress. Next is Loader, and she has some of my favorites. Almost all of her loadout variations have something special going for them. Let's start with using Grapple Fist as a quick way to get around the map on Sky Meadows by latching onto one of these rocks. Pretty straightforward, not much to say about that. Or if you're a Spiked Fist enjoyer, I've got you covered as well. You can damage far away monsters with the Spiked Fist without actually using the skill. This is because the hitbox for Spiked Fist extends a little bit past the grapple range for it. The hard part is learning how far back to stand to take full advantage of this. The margin for error here is pretty tight, but once you do find that sweet spot, you can just spam Spiked Fist to your heart's content since it also applies a stun effect. Thunder Slam can be used in conjunction with either of the gauntlets to add a lot more oomph to your punch. While charging and using the gauntlets, Thunder Slam can be used without the animation playing. However, the startup time on Thunder Slam is unchanged, so if you want to land it at the same time as your punch, you'll have to use it a few seconds beforehand. Once again, this is something you'll get used to if you just keep practicing. Now let's talk about some pylon techs. By grappling and throwing out the pylon at the same time, you can very quickly build up momentum. The way this works is, when you first throw out the pylon, it has some initial velocity, and you can use that to your advantage to get a pretty significant speed boost. If you just use both grapple and pylon at the same time, you should be able to consistently do this. You can also use pylon to push down the buttons on abandoned aqueduct. This is especially great because bands are OP as HE double hockey sticks on loader. Now, this isn't as hard as it sounds, it's actually pretty easy. The pylon stays active for 15 seconds and it falls throughout this duration, so you don't actually have to land the pylon on the button, as long as it's positioned above it in a way that will hit it when it falls. The tricky part here is getting over to the other button in time. Now, it is loader, so having backup mags will make this much easier, especially if the two buttons are on opposite sides of the map but I always go for this on loader no matter how long it takes me. In my opinion, getting free bands on abandoned aqueduct justifies taking pylon over thunderslam. Seriously, bands are just that good. This last pylon tech is very stupid. Similar to the Merc Slam, the Pylon can also slam enemies and deal massive damage. The Pylon has velocity, so it can slightly nudge monsters. Now, this is very situational and inconsistent, but it's worth talking about. I've only seen two good applications of this though. Uh, the first is pushing a Beetle Queen off the map for an insta-kill. Uh, this is very rare, but it can happen. The second is pushing a Vagrant into a wall for massive damage. It's very finicky, and since the Pylon has a 20 second cooldown, Pulling this off is just disrespectful to the monsters. Now, I tried for like an hour to try to cheese the alloy worship unit with this, and it is possible to slam kill it, but I don't think this is reliable. First of all, I had cheats on to get rid of the pylon cooldown so I could spam it. Then I managed to get him in this corner where I just smacked the sin out of him with pylons. This got him to spin and move really fast. I then slammed a pylon in the direction he was moving and it worked. If anyone can legitimately pull this off in an actual game though, please let me know. And that about does it for Loader. 2,000 years from now, or maybe even 500 years from now, one of you probably out there will be digging up my mummy. This will be an exciting thing for both me and you. Artificer doesn't really have any major techs or strats. I mean, there's the Ion Surge Pillar Skip and Ice Spear Mythrix Cheese, but I feel like those are pretty well known. There are some cool interactions with Volcanic Egg though. If you use Egg while you're charging your secondary, you can continue to charge it while in the Egg. You can also use Flamethrower while in the Egg, but if you're an Ion Surge enthusiast like me, you can use Egg to cancel the vertical momentum from Ion Surge by activating it right after. This is useful if you want to use this ability to damage monsters without losing your position. You can also cancel Ion Surge with Strides of Heresy, but that's about it for Artificer. Years ago. I was Chinese. Next, we have everyone's favorite funny plant, Rex. Rex is pretty straightforward. He has some small things, like his secondary cancels the end lag on his primary, so fire his primary, then use his secondary, then use his primary again, and just repeat. Uh, this lets you shoot just a tiny bit faster. You can do the same thing with his utility as well, but unless you have a million purities or something, I wouldn't waste his only movement ability getting a tiny boost in attack speed one time, but it's there. 
The only other Rex tech I'm going to mention is the Alloy Worship Unit cheese. By using Tangling Growth on the side of the pillar opposite the Alloy Worship Unit, you can slam it into the pillar and inflict massive damage. This usually doesn't quite kill, but it gets his health lower than Shoddy. It's best to do this when the AWU spawns in, because he'll move around and make your life difficult, but this can be done at any time. Strong flowing, deep currents. Desire. Bandit doesn't have a lot going on, he's probably the most straightforward character. His primary has two reloads, a fast and slow variant. The slow variant only happens when a reload is initiated and there are still shots in the clip, and this only affects the first reload. So if you fire three of four shots, the first shot will reload in half a second and the following two will reload in a quarter of a second. Optimizing Bandit's primary revolves around not getting the slow reload, so you can use all at once or in twos. I personally like spamming shots as soon as they're reloaded because it eliminates Bloom. That's really it for Bandit. Um, I will mention he has a cool interaction with Brilliant Behemoth and Lights Out and Desperado. The Blast from Behemoth can utilize the on kill effect of either of his specials, making it a lot easier to proc Lights Out and Desperado respectively. Tighten your stomach. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Always slow and strong. Uh, finally, we have Commando, and once again, Commando is pretty straightforward. By sliding and jumping at the same time, you can get a boost from the slide and the horizontal distance at the same time. Commando's roll can also trimp up slopes, but it's quite bad and not nearly as effective as Merc's trimp. While we're on the subject of Bohemoth techs, Commando's grenades do 700% damage upon exploding, but Bohemoth procs every time the nade bounces, allowing for massive damage. My name is Cecil. I'll sell you gas or diesel cars on my lot. Uh, and that's it. I skipped over a lot of smaller techs, and I honestly could probably make a follow-up video including a lot of the things I left out. Let me know in the comments if that's something you want to see, or if you have any questions. I went through a lot of stuff here, and this video was not as comprehensive as I would have liked. Again, I plan on making videos on each of the survivors once the DLC comes out. I'll be able to get into a lot more detail and hopefully do a better job than I did in this video. I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Go to pigpiss.com. That's not a joke. It really will take you to my Twitch. Also, I have a Discord. It's kind of stupid, but we have one of the developers in there, and I give updates there more frequently. So feel free to check it out. Look forward to two videos a month this year, and have a fantastic day. Ta-ta for now.